Question 10 from the 2019 Higher Physics SQA exam, Section 2. A student carries out an experiment to investigate the effect of a grating on beams of light from three different lasers. You have the laser going through the diffraction grating and you have the central maximum and the first order maximum shown on the diagram. It's not drawn to scale. The three different lasers which is red, green and blue light respectively and each laser beam is directed in turn towards the grating. The grating has a slit separation of 3.3 times 10 minus 6 metres. Now part A says state which of these three colours of laser light would produce the smallest angle theta between the central maximum and the first order maximum. And we have to justify our answer. Well, to justify our answer, we begin with using our diffraction equation in lambda is going to equal to d sine of the angle between the central maximum and the order n. But we're told that n equals 1 here because we're dealing with the first order. n equals 1 because that's going to be the first order maximum. And therefore, our equation becomes lambda is going to equal to d sine of theta. And remember, theta will be the angle this time between the central maximum and the first order maximum. We can rearrange to find out what sine theta is on its own by dividing both sides by d. And we have this equation here. Lambda divided by d equals sine theta. There's a lot we can get from that equation. We know that we're going to be having a small lambda, a small wavelength. That would imply that sine theta is going to be small. And therefore, that would make theta small. And if we've got a large lambda, large wavelength, then that would imply that sine theta is going to be large. And therefore, theta is going to be large. So depending on which colour or wavelength we use, we're going to get different angles. And we are asked to justify which of these is going to give uh, the smallest angle theta. So red, and we're going to have green, and we're going to have blue. Now obviously, from our argument here, it's going to be the wavelength with the smallest wavelength that's going to give the smallest angle. So which one of these three characters here have got the smallest wavelength, red, green or blue? Now, we know that if we get into exam knowing our colours, we know fine well that red would have the longest wavelength, blue would have the shortest wavelength and green would be somewhere in between. Now, if you didn't know that, that red was the longest wavelength, and blue is the shortest wavelength, you can go to your data sheet and your data sheet gives you the information under the spectral lines section. And you can see red is 644, green is 509 and blue is 480. So from that information, we know that blue light is actually the smallest wavelength. So blue light would be the smallest lambda and that would be the largest lambda the red one just from looking at your data sheet now once we've got that information we now can go and we can state the answer to a question uh, which of these colors of laser light would produce the smallest angle theta between the central maximum and the first order and that's obviously going to be blue so you'd have blue maybe here and you would have red up here and of course maybe in between you're going to get that green color uh, in between, because that's going to be in between there. So the answer to that question would be blue lights, and you can see your justification for it. Question 10 continued. Part B. The angle theta between the central maximum and the first order maximum for light for one of the lasers is 8.9 degrees. And we have to calculate the wavelength of this light. Now to do that, we use our equation for our grating, our diffraction grating, n lambda equals d multiplied by sine of theta. And we know that n is the order of the uh, maximum we're looking at, in this case n equals 1. We know that d is the spacings between the slits, and we're told this time it's 3.3 times 10 to the minus 6 of a metre. So we don't have to work out that, because usually if you're given the number of lines per millimetre, then you do have to work out D, but in this case, you're told D. So all we have to do is put our equation, our numbers into equation, lambda equals D sine theta is what we'll have. And therefore, lambda wavelength is going to be equal to 
uh, d, which is 3.3 times 10 to the minus 6 of a metre, multiplied by sine of the angle. And the angle is going to be 8.9 degrees. Now we do that in our calculator. We end up with the wavelength to be 5.1 times 10 to the minus 7 of a metre. And we can change that into a nanometers because times 10 to minus 7, you can change that to 510 times 10 to minus 9 of a metre. And we can change that into nanometers, 510 nanometers. So that's the wavelength of the light used. Now for one mark, we're asked to determine the colour of the light from this laser. And we can once again use our relationship sheet at the beginning. And there it is there. And we can see green light is 509 nanometers, which is almost what we've calculated. So the colour of the light that the laser used is going to be green light. And that's going to be our answer to get us what extra one mark there. Question 10, part 3. Another student suggests that a more accurate value for the wavelength of this laser light can be found if a grating with a slit separation of 5.0 times 10 minus 6 metres is used. Explain why this suggestion is incorrect. It's for two marks. Now, we've gone from a grating of 3.3 times 10 minus 6 metres to one which is bigger. So if we look at our diffraction equation again, n lambda is d, that's what we've changed, times sine of the angle between the, ma the central maximum and the particular order. Now we know that n equals 1 in this case, so we can rearrange that to give us lambda is going to equal to d sine of theta. Theta being the angle between the central maximum and the first order. Now we can rearrange that to give us lambda divided by d is going to give us sine theta. Now we have made d bigger. And if we make d bigger, then sine theta is going to become smaller. So if d is larger, or d is bigger, then that would imply that sine theta is going to be smaller. And if sine theta is smaller, therefore theta is going to be smaller. Now that will make it much more difficult to measure the angle. The smaller the angle, it's harder to measure. And we can also look upon that in terms of the uncertainties. We know that the uh, percentage error in our measurement is equal to the actual error, we'll call that delta theta, divided by theta itself. So if we make theta smaller, we're going to make the percentage error bigger. So if theta is smaller, then that would imply that the percentage error is larger. And that's not what the student is actually suggesting. So there's your answer to that one, and two good marks. Mm -hmm.